Um, well, Roots, congratulations on the win tonight. You've done something that hasn't happened to victory in 16 regular season games. You've beaten them. How'd you do it? Uh, a lot of belief, a lot of organisation, uh, understanding exactly how they play. They've been together for a year and a lot of their movements and um, are not too dissimilar. We had a good, good look at them in pre-season. You know, I thought we nullified their main threats. Uh, I thought we, put, we came into the game after about the 10th, 15th minute mark and we really showed our quality and put a lot of pressure on them. And um, I, I thought we deserved that second part of that first half to, to get something out of it. You know, we threatened and there were some good combinations. We're, we're still not there. And that's that's kind of clear. We were a bit anxious last week. Um, I, I thought that anxiety wasn't there as such today. But it's never easy to come to a place like this, at an atmosphere like this, which generates some of the best noise in the competition. Uh, but they were very, very disciplined. They worked extremely hard for each other. And, and uh, like I said, uh, we never allowed them to play through us as such. We... we, we the game plan was, was perfect and they executed it incredibly, incredibly well. And um, those last 10 minutes where you've got to really roll up your sleeves and stay organised and communicate and stay disciplined was, was there. The character shown by the players was fabulous. How big is this for you and the boys? I mean, it's a brand new group. You're trying to lay a foundation. It's your best start in three years. You've just knocked off Melbourne Victory in, as you said, a very hostile environment. How big is this for you, putting in place a foundation for what you want to achieve this season? It's very important for our fans and our members. You know, we, we, we've tried and worked really hard to, to connect with them in the off-season. You know, part of the strategy was also, in my mind, was bringing back players from the region. Gabriel Kleurs from Fairfield, you know, Rami Najarin re-signed, Jared Carluccio re-signed, Lawrence Thomas is a boy from Blacktown. You know, I can go on. You know, I really worked hard here and overseas to entice you know, a lot of players because they understand the people from the West. Um, and I keep saying we're just an extension of them. What they want to see more than anything else is a representation of themselves in that team. And the West are, uh, are fighters. You know, they've got a, a bit of a chip on their block because things haven't always gone their way. You know, I understand that growing up as well. Um, and, and that's what's important for us. Everyone talks about the importance of having a, a strong Western Sydney Wanderers in the competition. I, I couldn't agree more. But we, like I said, in the off season, there was a lot of thinking and stra strategizing and planning going on, uh, you know, in my head and, and, and the staff and, and, entire, and throughout the whole entire club to make sure that it, that we put those those stones in place and we build a and lay a good platform in order for us to move forward. And it's only round two, and the big important thing this week is that we don't get too complacent because our next opponent is yet to win a game and we're at home and probably expected to win and, and there won't be any of that, particularly with this group that we've got. Well, that's it. You just sort of said you don't want to get complacent or ahead of yourselves because I, I think the last time this happened, two games, I think it was three wins in a row and then it all sort of fell apart. But I guess what gives you the confidence that you can really, I guess, go on from here and, you know, people are going to talk about the finals, you know, drought and those sorts of things. It's still very early. It happens, yeah, yeah. But, like, what makes you feel that this is a Because a we've got a great group because I've got a fantastic group. I can't talk of the past. I wasn't around the club in the past. Um, I know each and every single player, staff member, people in the office, I know every single one of them. I know everything about them. They've all bought in. It's a collective. It's not just those players that, that go and, and cross that white line. It's a collective. You know, We're unified as a football club. And the mentality is as such where we're all going to work hard for each other and make sure we don't let each other down. There's a lot of trust in the group. When I say group, I mean everybody, from the people in the office, in the front front desk, to the people, the staff behind the scenes. You know, Cat Smith, who's our Wanderers, W League coach as well, you know, to JP, who's the new TD. We're all in this together. You know, we need everybody's help. We're only as good as each other. So the mentality and the people that we've got um, at this football club are, are, sec are second to none as far as I'm concerned. It's a fantastic group. You seen many goals like that one from Tommy Machella from a hundred and ninety-five centimetre centre back before. It's pretty. Yeah, special. I did it myself about fifteen years ago, and uh, no, <laughs> I didn't. But he's 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 got the license to do that, particularly in those transition moments as well. Um, sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. I always maintain when we're doing transition games of training, the defenders are always the ones who, who make the right pass at the right time, and you know I like, like to have a bit of a laugh with the boys as well, but. 
you know, like, like I said, you, you make your own luck in this game. You work hard and, and, you, and, you, and you get what you deserve. Rude, you spoke about during the week about sort of channeling the emotion because during the week, obviously, you mentioned that the players were almost, you know, getting a bit too excited in the lead up to this game. How important was, I guess, you know, controlling that and sort of as the game went on, obviously, the players, there was a few spicy moments, but making sure I didn't almost get too excited before the game and, you know, really just focus it in those key moments. Yeah, I think what the difference was from last week to this week was going away and then travelling and then being around each other where you've, you've got the ability to keep a, a close eye on them you can see everything. You can see what time they wake up, how they eat their breakfast, you know, um, how they, what they do afterwards, um, you know, all those things. And, and we're a team that loves being around each other. You know, we had, we had a, a fantastic 10-day camp at the Gold Coast and we really built on our culture and our values and what we want to be uh, and, who we want to rep and what we want to represent as a, as, as a football club as well. So I think that was the, the, the difference. And I just wanted to enjoy it. You know, I, I keep saying football is there. Just re remember the moments when you were young, when, you, when your mum or dad gave you a, a ball and you went out in the backyard and started playing with it on your own, then with your mates, then on the street, then you played a bit of organised football. But that love is still there, you know. I, I'm still as passionate as ever about the game, you know. The game is, is at the forefront of everything, right. So that's, that's always important and, and I think they need to just enjoy the moment, relax and, and, and just be themselves. And just on Callum, uh, Callum Neuvenhoff today, probably easily one of the best on today. He hasn't played a lot of football for the last two years. He's obviously come across to the Wanderers. And today, I mean, he's 21, but he plays with a head above his shoulders. Looks like he's a lot more mature than his he's age. 21. I thought he was 19. Yeah, well, he's yeah. 21, according right, to okay. here. But um, I guess, you know, how have you seen him since he's come across? Great. Uh, Fantastic. I, I, gave, I gave him a call. He was a bit disjointed and, and disappointed with what was going on um, at his old club. You know, he didn't feel as though he was getting cared for, looked after or getting game time. He's, the environment that we've created, you know, is one where they need to enjoy it, but they also get challenged every day. And, he, and he's been superb, really, really fantastic as far as I'm concerned. But he's, he's still young and he's, he's got a really good head, head on his shoulders, really mature. And um, his game was good, but can get better. You know, there were still moments there where he has to understand how we do things and the little things as well, and, and he will. Um, you heard anything from the fitness staff, Rudes? Any injury concerns coming out of this game? Ninkovic looked like he's you know, his nose reorganised. Any other concerns? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. Um, just general tightness, and it was really interesting to see Gabriel Clue, who who can run. Like when everyone's on their feet, he'll still keep going. He got a bit of cramp, but you know, don't forget he had three different wingers. He had, to, he had to mark, you know, with, with the exchanging of players and then the economies coming on and all that sort of stuff. And, but he was good. Like I said, they, we restricted them to one shot on, on, on target at home in 96 minutes. I think that's, that's incredible from us. Just um, obviously former centre-back yourself, Mark, just that partnership of Marcelo and Marcello, what do you think that partnership can do? It looks very sturdy, as you mentioned, just the one shot on target tonight? Does it feel like one that can really be a bedrock, I guess? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Marcelo was the last piece of the puzzle. He, he came in the latest and I was looking for a real strong leader, you know, and my first conversation with him on a what, what's app face thing, whatever it's called, when we mm. got to see each other, um, um, was fantastic. You know, I got some really good vibes and good feeling about him and you, know, you, you can tell a lot by looking in someone's eye and and seeing what they're about and you do your research then and you speak to a lot of people and he all checks out really well and he was really motivated to come and, and not just have a holiday. I mean, the guy's played that many Champions League games. He's won championships wherever he's gone. I need a strong leader at the back and that's exactly what he is. And he's fantastic around the group. The first thing he said to me after the game was, let's not get too excited. We've got to, we've got to back up, we've got to recover well and get back to Sydney and, and look forward to next week. That's the kind of leader he is. Just no concerns with, with Milos there. He obviously had a bit of trouble. Yeah, no, he's, he's got a bit of a bruise and a bit of a scratch. You know, that's what I call it anyway. You know, a bit of a. Uh, but, you know, we'll, ha we'll have a look at that. And, you know, he, he kept going. Um, he's a fighter, Milos, let me tell you. You know, he's, he's fantastic. Fantastic. Just about Cassini, I mean, just a small one. I mean, where do you see his best role? Because obviously yeah. he can play through the middle and he played a lot more on the left today. He played a little bit more wide last week as well, I guess. Where do you see his best position in this team? 
Oh, look, he's, he's someone that's going to put his hand up. We played two up front at times in pre-season as well. But um, right now, he's, he's an incredible athlete. And when he faces opponents or even back to goal, he's got this that rare one-on-one -on -one ability. We need to obviously tweak a few things. What I'm most proud with Cass is that he's had his first full pre-season, even at his age. And we've done a lot of work in, in, in terms of his mentality and, and making sure we understood why. And he has not missed a beat. He has turned up to every training session and finished every training session. And I got so much love for that guy and so much belief in what he can do. If he trusts the process and keeps going the way he's going, it doesn't matter if he plays as a striker or, or a wide player. You know, he's got the X factor. We just need to refine some things and improve him.